Welcome to 3 Minute Thursdays. 3 Minute Thursdays are a short breakdown of topics that you will see within your flight training here at UND. The goal is for you, the student, to have a better understanding of what it takes to become a safe, professional pilot. Hello, my name is Tyler Lauer. I'm a lead flight instructor at UND Aerospace. In the previous video, we highlighted how to set yourself up for the perfect approach to landing, starting from a beam your aiming point to calling your stabilized approach at 200 feet AGL. Today, we will address some misconceptions about stabilized approach procedures below 200 feet AGL as you approach the round out. We all know that the Piper Archer stabilized approach airspeed is 66 plus or minus five. Organizationally, we have been doing a great job of hitting this airspeed on final. Where we are missing the mark is the deceleration as we approach the runway. To better understand this concept, let's take a look at the Piper Seminole POH. The Seminole landing distance chart works very similarly to the Archer. However, let's focus on the data being collected. If we take a look here, we can see that the Seminole has a published POH approach speed. This is because the seminal approach speed of 88 knots is 33 knots above VSO. Dissipating that much energy in the round out and flare is almost impossible, especially when conducting short field landings. We can take this knowledge and apply it to our archer. The POH approach speed for the Piper Archer is 66 knots. As a reminder, VSO is 45. So we need to work on slowing the airplane down as we approach the round out. It is not required, nor should you be, maintaining 66 knots all the way to the roundout. Remember, the roundout begins only approximately 10 to 20 feet above the ground when beginning to transition the nose into a landing attitude. The Archer POH does not publish a speed to be at when reaching the roundout, but from experience, you should be decelerating through the mid-50s when beginning the roundout. This means that we need to have a steady deceleration from 66 knots at 200 feet down to the mid 50s by the roundout while maintaining our aiming point and glide path. The second contributing factor to most loss of directional control events is crosswind correction. This can be taught to be added at many different places on the approach. Early in flight training, you may want to add crosswind correction as early as 200 feet AGL. This will allow you to get a feel for how much correction is needed to maintain the side slip into the round out and flare. As you become more proficient with crosswind landings, you may delay the correction until short final. For example, I wait until roughly 50 feet AGL. There is no right answer here. However, it is imperative that you are adding the correction on final and setting that airplane up to enter the round out and flare at an appropriate airspeed with quality wind correction. Today's video was all about breaking bad habits. Airspeed control on final is very important to enabling you to transition into the round out and flare. This will ensure the airplane is touching down at an appropriate landing attitude and at or just above stall speed. I promise if you work on these concepts, the next phases of the landing will get much easier. Tune in to our next video as we break down the round out. Thank you for watching 3 Minute Thursdays. If you have a topic that you would like to see covered, please comment below. Remember, fly safe and we'll see you on the flight line. Slow it down. <laughs> that was so much easier. <laughs>